So I want to build again on, on some of the questions and your responses from previous members. And I think uh, I want to focus in on the corruption <coughs> associated with the Green Slush Fund. And uh, surprisingly, and actually refreshing, I should uh, use the appropriate phrase, it was refreshing to hear from my colleague, uh, Liberal MP Ikra Khalid, Khalid, so my apologies, actually refer to this <laughs> as, as corruption because that's exactly what it is. Hell and I'm yeah. sure, Ms. Morgan, given your level of experience uh, with government, you're certainly familiar with the sponsorship scandal that brought down the Cretien and Martin governments. You're familiar with that? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. And it's no small wonder, given the gravity of what we have with the Screen Slush Fund corruption scandal, that an associate deputy minister was heard on a secret tape referring to exactly this. This is a sponsorship-style level of corruption within the government, the likes that he has not seen since the sponsorship scandal. So on the issue then of corruption, it's no small wonder that the opposition parties, collectively all the opposition parties, voted in favor of an order for more transparency. And what that entailed was essentially ordering documentation from the government, documentation from the Auditor General, documentation from the SDTC to shed more light. The Prime Minister Justin Trudeau essentially said that sunlight was the, the best way to promote transparency and accountability. He ran on that in 2015. The order of the House was made June the 10th, 2024. Um, on June the 11th, the Clerk of the Court sent letters to the Clerk of the Privy Council, the CEO of SDTC and the Auditor General of Canada to inform them of the order. Uh, it was to be received, the documents to, re to be received by July the 10th, 2024. And no small surprise, given the level of corruption and secrecy behind this, that a number, a great number of government departments and subsidiaries um, essentially redacted pages, hundreds of pages of documents um, pursuant to the order, which is the opposite of transparency and accountability. And of note, I note the Canada Revenue Agency heavily redacted, the Innovation, Science and Economic Development heavily redacted, National Research Council heavily redacted, Justice Canada and the Privy Council Office. Now, I want to confirm from your perspective the documentation that SDTC provided pursuant to this order was completely unredacted. Is that accurate? Is that correct? Um, Mr. Chair, we have provided all of the documents requested by Parliament. A very small number were redacted based on solicitor client privilege alone. Redacted on the basis of identity and addresses and personal information or some other reason that you can't get into? Uh, Mr. Chair, the only documents that were redacted by SDTC were documents that included solicitor client privilege, um, which is essentially legal advice. Uh, we provided 10,000 documents. Um, I believe around you just repeated 300 yourself. of them included some redaction. For 300, 300. Yeah, okay. legal advice. Okay. Yeah. And were you part of that process of uh, gathering up the documents, reviewing it, consulting with lawyers on the basis of what redactions, if any, would be made? Was that a decision made by you and the board? The board directed staff and council to fully comply with the order. Okay. And did you or any other member of the board actually review the documents, the some 10,000 pages of documents, uh, prior to its release to the government? Mr. Chair, those, re those documents were reviewed by staff and council okay. under the direction of the board to fully comply with the order of parliament. Okay, and given your mandate, your new mandate in terms of rooting out uh, fraudulent and wrongdoing and taking the appropriate action, my spidey sense on what's transparency right now in the House, we have a privilege motion uh, that has been ongoing for a number of days and will continue for a number of days because it was the government itself and every member of government in the back bench who refused to vote in favor of the disclosure requests and are now opposed 
uh, to the release of these documents. They're claiming for charter protected reasons, which is just completely nonsense. Your question, Mr. Brock, or wrap it up. Yes, the, quest the question is, do you think it's an appropriate use of our time to demand accountability? Do you think Canadians deserve accountability and full access to all the documents to assist you ultimately in the process of ensuring fraud and wrongdoing is rooted out and that appropriate recovery action takes place? Yes or no? Mr. Chair, my role is as a member of the Board of SDTC, and we have complied with the Order of Parliament for the production of papers. Thank you very much. That wasn't the uh, question. Yep, you have over five minutes, please. Oh, no.